Hi, I'm Dan Lehman from AutomationHelpers.com, and we help companies like yours get automated with portals, apps, and integrations. Today, we're going to be talking about Vectorshift, a no-code AI platform. And one of the things as I've been exploring Vectorshift that I really appreciate is that there's no hype. There's no fluff behind this. They're not trying to convince me how awesome their AI model is and their AI agents. Instead, they're saying, here's a toolkit and you can build amazing things off of this. You're able to build with drag and drop via no code, or you can build with Python. You've got access to tons of helpful integrations, and you can connect to whichever LLM you prefer. And ultimately, you can use this to build internal assistance, chatbots, or workflow automations. The easiest way to get started is by building our own pipeline. So let's come up here to this plus button and we'll say create a new pipeline. Now, if you're coming from the world of data, the term pipeline already makes sense to you. But for everybody else out there, you can think of a pipeline just as a workflow or as an automation. There's a ton of different templates to choose from. In our second example, we're going to build from a template, but I think it's helpful to get started from scratch. So most of the time, the first thing that we want is to have an input. This is going to be a value that we collect from our user. Now, this could be just a form field and we actually type in that information or we could collect it in a chatbot kind of interface, but we have to start from somewhere. For this example, we're going to build a YouTube summarizer, something that can take the transcript from a URL video that we give it and then summarize the content of that video. So here for our input, we're going to want to click in and we'll change the name to YouTube URL. Now, when we go to test this out, when we press the play button, you'll see that we have this input where we can actually input, copy, paste that URL. And then the other side of this is to say, okay, after we've taken an input and we do something to it, we run it through some kind of LLM, then we're eventually going to output this data. So we'll always want to have at least one output and we can simply connect these two by just dragging input to output. Now, if I were to actually test this, this would be kind of silly because we're just taking an input We're running it and it gives us that same output. So instead, we'll remove this connection because now we really want to do something in the middle to actually make this interesting. So here I'm going to click on my data loaders and you can see we've got a number to choose from. This is one of the really cool things about this tool is that it kind of productizes many of the common loaders you might use, like a URL, an API, a CSV. And in this case, we're going to choose YouTube. I'll click on YouTube. We'll add this to the screen. And as you might expect, we're just going to click and drag to be able to connect this. So this is going to take the YouTube that we gave it as an input, and it's going to pump it into this YouTube data loader. Now, the whole goal of this middle step is to be able to take that transcript from the video as is. It's not going to massage it. It's not going to summarize it. It's just going to give us the transcript. So let's take that output, and we'll connect that to our output. Now let's go ahead with the same URL and see what happens. And now it gives us the output of that transcript. I do wish it had the ability to actually time code it for us, but this is a good start. We've got kind of that raw data of the transcript, and now we can go about summarizing it on our own. So let's go ahead and disconnect this from the output because we want to be able to actually summarize this, not just purely have our transcript. We can move this around to make it a little bit more accessible here. I'm going to click on the LLMs, and you can see we've got several different options. I'm going to choose Anthropic in this case because I found that it gave me better information, a better summary, was a little bit more consistent than what I was getting with OpenAI. So in this case, we're going to take the output of our YouTube loader. Remember, this is the transcript that we're talking about, and we're going to feed this into the prompt. Now, at this point, it says prompt connected. There's really nothing else we can do in the prompt. And then in addition to the prompt, we can give it a little summary of what we want this to do. So we're telling it to take that raw transcript and then be able to make a summary. You'll notice that you have the option to use a personal API key. So it's really up to you. They price in a certain number of credits that you can use with their LLMs without having to set up your own account. But if you already have it, it's going to be slightly more cost effective that way. And again, let's go ahead and connect this to the output. And I'm going to change that field name to summary. Let's run this again. And here you can see we get a better formatted summary instead of just the raw transcript itself. Now let's say we wanted to go a step further and we've built this tool to help us summarize YouTube videos and we wanted to dump it into a Notion database or an Airtable database. So we've got access to that information later in the future. And let's say for one of those things, we wanted to identify the YouTube ID of that particular video, which is already in this YouTube URL. In this case, we'd want to be able to add a transformer. So when we get this transformation, we have to tell it what kind of transformation to make. Now, I've already created a transformation called Extract Video ID. So let's take a look at exactly how we build that. Let's head back to our menu up at the top. And you can see we've got an area for transformations. And here's that transformation called Extract Video ID. And you can see this is where we can use a little bit of Python, which goes a long ways. Now, transformations can feel a little bit low code oriented, but I love that we have this flexibility because it's so much more complicated in no code to be able to do things like manipulate your data. So for example, we could have an output from a node that's going to give us JSON. 
And we want to be able to capture part of that JSON. And so it'd be really easy with Python to be able to extract that. In this case, all we're doing is we're saying, hey, grab that URL from YouTube and we're going to split it when we get to the question mark. And then the second part of that, that's using our first index here, that's going to give us the ID for this. So again, just a simple line of code that we can use to transform the data so that we can manipulate it in an easier fashion. Back in our pipeline, we can now choose the transformation of extract video ID. We'd see multiple if we had them. And now this takes an input of a YouTube URL and it's going to output that ID. So we can grab this and we can connect it directly. Now, this is one of the things I love compared to other no-code tools that are out there that we can have a single input and we can actually branch where that goes. So we're going to branch it both to the YouTube loader and we're branching it to this transformation. At this point, we basically have three key values that would be helpful to store in a database. We've got the raw transcript itself. We've got the summary that we've made of the transcript. And now we have this video ID. Let's go into our integrations this time. I'm going to choose Airtable, but you could choose Notion or whichever integration makes sense for you. You'll have to connect this through OAuth and then you're ready to, in this case, we could create a new record, find a record or update a record. We're going to create one. So let's configure this. We'll choose from our base, which we already scoped to this YouTube videos one. And then let's write it to our videos table. And here we can tell it we're going to capture the YouTube ID. We're going to capture the transcript and we're going to capture that summary. We'll save that configuration. And at this point, we can get rid of our output here and we'll connect this response that'll go directly to our summary. And then we'll take our output from our YouTube loader and that's going to come into our transcript. And then we'll take our video ID and this is going to come into our YouTube ID. So you can see how easily we can map different fields from different parts of this pipeline. At this point, we're ready to test it out. So we'll press that play button and let's plug in our URL. We'll go ahead and run this. And if we head back into Airtable, you can see it's now created this record with information about the transcript and the summary itself. So we could expand this record and view all of that information that we have. Of course, you could add as many different fields as you need. So we've shown you an example of a pipeline. Let's look through the different menu options here. We've got our analytics. Our analytics are going to show the successes and failures and show you the number of AI credits you're using. So this is very helpful to be able to get an all up view of everything happening in your system. Transformations we talked about to be able to take some data and then be able to transform it and use that output. If you want to do testing between different variations of your pipelines, you can do that with this evaluation tool. And then next, we're going to talk about building a chatbot. And to get started, we're actually going to take a look at our knowledge sources right here. So I've built one for NoLoco, which is just another no-code tool. And I wanted to see how far I could get building a chatbot for a platform that I don't even own. I don't have access to their database directly to be able to do anything. So within this knowledge, we could actually add multiple different documents. We could upload files like PDFs. We could add an integration if we want to connect to Airtable or Notion and pull data that's already in a database. And then what I did in this case was I scraped a URL. Because NoLoco's knowledge base is public facing, I could say, I'm going to feed it a URL. We're going to go recursive on this. And that's where it's able to scrape thousands of these different vectors that it's going to store. Now we've got some additional options here as well. So what this means is we could create a new pipeline here. Again, remember our pipeline is just our way of connecting this all together. So instead of creating one from scratch this time, we can just search a knowledge base template. And here you can see this is just pre-configured for me. We've got an input, a user question, and then it's going to read information from the knowledge base. And it's going to take the information of both the input, the question, as well as what we're able to pull from the knowledge base. And then we're going to send it into the OpenAI LLM. And then finally, we're going to return a response to the user. Now, in this case, we need to choose from a knowledge base or create a new one. This is where we can choose that no loco knowledge base we've already created. So I'm not going to do anything to change this. Instead, we'll just go ahead and test it out. And instead of using the form based input, it makes more sense that we'll do this as a chat bot. So if I'm a user, maybe I'm asking a pre-sales question like what data sources can I connect to? Now, if I expand this, you can see this was a really long response. So we could give it some instructions to trim it down a little bit, but this is accurate information. Here's different data sources that exist today. Here's some that are on the roadmap it was able to pull that from. And so you can see how helpful this is to be able to digest your different data sources, including your knowledge base, to provide information to your users. And then it's really simple to be able to turn this into an external chatbot. We can click this little button up here to export this 
as a chatbot. We'll give it a name, no loco chat. Here's our input and output. We'll turn this on as auto deploy. So any changes are going to update this. We'll create the chatbot. And then here's where you have all these additional styling options. You can talk about the user avatar and how it can have some follow-up related questions. So they're really doing a lot to be able to give you a full-fledged chatbot not just what's happening with the LLM, but you can make other changes to make a more robust chatbot. So hopefully this gives you a few ideas of what you can do with Vectorshift to be able to build your own no-code AI automations. If you have any questions about your own business automations, don't hesitate to reach out to our website at automationhelpers.com where we're offering free 30-minute consultations.